Did you guys hire Matt Patricia? Um, yeah, I know there was a report out that that, that was said, and uh, we're, we're trending in that direction. Um, it's Nothing's final final yet, and we're trending in that direction. And uh, and so we'll see how, how that progresses, but it's trending in that direction, yes. What's the report? It's on your website. It? Yeah, it's trending in that direction. Okay. Do you have to talk to Sly about yeah, that? Of course. Yeah, of course you, you go through, like you do with anything, you, you go through and you talk to, to guys and – and make sure everybody's comfortable with it. Um, you know, I had conversations with Slay. Obviously, I had conversations with Coach Patricia. And uh, you know, I know that they'll, you know, that it will be a, it will be a good working relationship for and and for uh, for us when uh, when that happens. It, what what can Matt Patricia offer to this team once it does happen? <laughs> yeah, um, obviously his resume speaks yeah, for itself. Press conference. Uh, his resume <laughs> speaks for itself. Um, he gives you a, a great uh, a mind in there that, that's done it at the highest level, uh, you know, and so it gives you great um, ability um, to bounce ideas off of with the defensive staff. And then also it gives me another uh, former head coach that I can bounce ideas off of as well, um, you know, with things, which, which I think would be very helpful. Howie, how did the, uh, the contract with Jalen come together so quickly? There you go. It's your turn. <laughs> We're turning. Um, yeah, I think you got to give tremendous credit to Jalen, um, Nicole Lynn, um, the people internally, um, Jake Rosenberg, Bryce Johnson, um, really just the, the, the way that uh, everyone kind of had made an effort to do this in a way that uh, was really win-win. Um, I think it's a heck of a deal uh, for Jalen. I think it's a heck of a deal for the Eagles. And um, I, I think those are those are really the best kind of deals. And, and really, when I think about uh, Jalen coming here, uh, there's so many people deserve a, a lot of credit for where we are right now. It starts with Jalen and his work ethic and his determination. Um, from the first day we drafted him, he had he had a vision of what kind of player he's going to be. And then um, just everyone who's been has been around him was rallied around him. And um, it, it's it's a great story. Um, we're certainly not at the end of the story. I think we're really at the beginning of the story, but um, just really excited about doing this together with him and having him uh, a part of this team and, and having that done in a, in a way that, that really uh, worked out well for both sides. Nick, did you ever get involved in the process? Yeah, in the negotiations of the uh, contract? No. <laughs> what, was your, what was your reaction? I mean, like, I mean, what was your involvement in terms of, uh, I mean, like that the giggle I mean, they never said if you wanted this guy or not. I mean, Jalen? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I was, uh, yeah, obviously I wanted him. Uh, <laughs> and, he, and, and, and Jeff, he actually wanted to be here. He wanted to be here too. So, uh, no, that's that's not that's not my job. Um, what was your reaction? That was juiced. I was excited. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, to Jalen and I have a great relationship, and um, you know, as a coach to player and and player to coach, and you know, I really value those relationships that we have, and and. And obviously, his his play has spoken for itself. So you're getting a guy that you like. One of my favorite things, Jeff, is, um, and I felt like when I, I left Indy, I missed out on this. There was a lot of guys that signed contracts in Indy after I left. And I'm like, man, I, I always really like that part of it where the guys get rewarded for what they've done, and I'm able to you know be there with them and 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 be happy for them and, and still be able to coach them and so that's that's kind of how I felt like yeah I, you know as this the is, I guess we've signed a couple guys since I've you know to long term deals since I've yeah, since, since I've been four, here but four, like four last year that was that was special the season it was special yeah, yeah. I, the the other thing about it too is like I I think um and I, I this probably goes without saying but. The fact that Jeffrey was willing to do this and, and commit to it and give us the support to do it and the green light to do it, um, you know, a year early, um, this kind of, of contract and the trust that he had, um, not only in us, but how excited he was to do it with Jalen. And, um, you know, because that's hard to do. You're doing it early. You're doing it a year early. You obviously have the tag. You have all these things at your disposal. And him recognizing, like, that this was the best thing to do for this team and this franchise. So, you know, just him doing that and him trusting us um, to do a deal that made sense on both sides, you know, he deserves a tremendous amount of credit. In terms of both the draft and the cap, what does that mean for you and your 
Yeah, and I think that's part of the deal that by doing it at the time we did um, and by um, being able to work together to do things that were important to them and important to us. And for us, it's about flexibility around him. You know, this is the ultimate team game and he needs to have talented people around him. Uh, Jalen recognized that, Nicole recognized that. And so to be able to do this in a way that uh, also gives us an opportunity to get good players. Um, and then, you know, we had kind of planned for this. Um, we, we had picks. We went into free agency kind of planning for this, getting comp picks. Um, you know, we'll get four comp picks next year. Um, and so, uh, you know, already, I mean, it's, it's kind of unusual, you know, certainly since I'm, I'm here, I don't remember, you know, being in a situation where we have 12 picks before this year's draft for next year's draft. Um, we'll probably have two after this draft, but, um, I, I think a little joke. I I thank you. Thank you. One laugh. Courtesy laugh. I didn't even get the courtesy laugh from you. Um, but I think, you know, for us, um, obviously, um, we got we get a chance to plan and we get a chance to to um, work or work around it and build around him and some of the guys that we have on long term contracts and and that's exciting but we got to continue to do the right thing um, I think we've had tremendous meetings leading up to this draft I think we've we've got a, a really good process in place that doesn't mean it's going to be perfect but um, I'm excited about the possibilities for a week from today and certainly beyond. How we, how we, uh, a draft, a draft question. Uh, there's a narrative that, yeah, there's, there's a narrative that you guys will never take a running back or a linebacker mm -hmm. in the first round. Obviously, it's been a long time since the franchise has done that. Um, what's your philosophy about running backs in the first round and and linebackers? And what would it take for you to uh, to take one? I think the most important thing when when you're picking um, in the first round, certainly when you're picking 10, is that you get a unique player. And I think that there's uh, so few unique players in any draft that if you start picking by position and not by, based on uh, the quality of the talent, um, then you really you, you get a chance. So if you pick by position and you pick a, bad, a player who's not any good, then it's not a good pick anyway. And so I think the most important thing for for us here is that we get uh, we utilize this opportunity to get a unique player uh, for our team. You know, certainly not planning to be picking at this point in the near future. That doesn't mean you know obviously things happen, and but we're not planning for that. And so we understand how important it is um, to get this right. And how do you get it right? Is you make sure you you get a unique player. And so. Um, I think that if you start saying, hey, we can only get a unique player, but it's got to be this position, um, you really narrow your options uh, right there. And so um, just trying to be as open-minded as possible about what that looks like and making sure that um, whoever we pick is somebody that we think um, can really impact the game. Howie, uh, being able to keep the cap numbers <coughs> as low as they are for, for Jalen, uh, who, who gets credit or you know, deserves credit? For that, and as part of part of it, ownership uh, being willing to kind of give cash up front. Well, there's no doubt. It all starts with Jeffrey and and his commitment uh, to provide us every resource possible on and off the field to make this a championship caliber football team. So it starts with him, and then you know we we got tremendous people inside this building who who have great ideas and um, led in that department by Jake and Bryce, and um, you know I think. Sometimes they come to me and they got to slow it down and talk to me like, you know, I'm in third grade and explain it to me so I, I can get on the phone and explain it to somebody else. And, um, you know, I, understanding the ramifications of what we're doing, you know, we're, we're not pulling the wool over the eyes of, of anyone, um, any players or, um, you know, Jeffrey. And when we explain what we're doing here, um, we have a plan that that doesn't just last for this year or next year. You know, we're not trying to do anything where five or six years from now, the Philadelphia Eagles won't be able to compete. Um, I think that um, we understand what we're doing and why we're doing it. And, um, you know, I, you got to have a willingness with the players to also um, want to do things that's right for the team. And um, Jalen and Nicole deserve a lot of credit as well. What's, what's, the, uh, what's, the, ver what's the verdict on um, in terms of research you guys done on Jalen Carter? And uh, do you feel comfortable – Drafting him at number ten. Yeah, we talked about it a little bit about the people in this building, and um, you know, there, there's there's no one we rely more on than Dom DeSandro, and um, we rely on him for things like this. And uh, at the end of the day, um, he does a tremendous job of getting us all the information and putting us in a position to make decisions. And I think every decision is unique to the player uh, and the situation. And so, 
Um, we'll have every piece of information at our disposal and be ready to make a decision on, on, on anyone who has, who has a situation that's maybe a little bit outside the norm. Well, you've always been really... So, so just follow up on, on uh, Jeff's question. Uh, some general managers uh, have uh, publicly said that they feel uh, better regarding uh, the specific issue of prospect jail Carter. Uh, after an in-person visit, would you say that's kind of accurate or uh, anything they might be able to share on that? Yeah, I'd say that every situation is unique to that situation, and I think for it, it's important that um, as an overall process that we, we don't really get into each and everyone's situation. I think that's where I'm most comfortable uh, as opposed to just talking about each and every guy. Um, and again, um, I, I I think that... We will do everything um, to make sure that we know everything we possibly can about every one of these players and to be in a position that if the opportunity arises, that we're in a position to make a decision that we feel really good about. You've always been really active when it comes to trades, like during the draft and everything. Because you don't have like a mid-round, fourth, five or six round pick, I mean, does that make it more likely, less likely, plus, you know, the extra picks you have next year and all that? Yeah, I, I think that it, it's dependent on, on the value of the pick that we have. And by, by that, I mean that if, um, for instance, last year um, when we were picking in the third round, uh, I don't know that we've had as many trade offers a, as – um, we did on any pick as we did in that third round pick, and I'm not saying that was for Nicobe or what it was, but we just felt like um, we didn't want to move that pick because of Nicobe. And last year we had traded our fourth and two fifths to move up for Jordan. So uh, I think the, the the most important thing for us is um, not necessarily to win the draft in terms of how many picks we can possibly get and how many players that we can possibly pick, but getting the right players. And so for us, there are going to be times where we're sitting there and, and our board's going to have a big drop off and we'll have a trade offer to move back. And we'll say, we think the value of this pick is better than getting some of these mid picks. And we've talked a lot in this room about when you're picking and how the odds naturally cut off at a, at a certain point in each round. Um, and you have a better chance of hitting on guys. I think the second part of what, what makes it really important that we can prepare for, because you don't know what's going to happen in the course of a draft, is we got to be prepared for undrafted free agency. You know, really proud of the job. Um, our scouts, our coaches, um, our football administration people did last year after the draft and adding um, – we had four, four guys make our team after the draft, and those are extra picks. When you look at – at the league where a majority of the players come from after the first couple of rounds, it's undrafted free agency. And so um, I think we really got to have a good process in place for that. I think we do have a good process in conjunction with, with uh, Coach and his coaches. And so I think that's something we can prepare for and make sure that if we come out of this um, with six picks, that we're also coming out with a bunch of players after the draft that we think can contribute to this football team. You've kind of, you've kind of you mentioned the 12 pick we have next year. Um, feels like you guys don't devalue future picks as much as other teams uh, around the league. So how do you kind of balance using future picks to move up or do whatever to add to your draft capital the current year versus making sure you get the appropriate value of those future picks? Yeah, I think that the most important thing is is the value of the player that you're talking about trading for with the future pick. Um, so that by, by that I mean that um, – if we were to be in the third round and uh, we had a first round grade on a guy and uh, we came to the conclusion that we would trade it next year too, it would be based on the fact of the grade of the player and the caliber of the player. And, um, you know, um, again, not saying that we're going to do that, but I think it's more about um, every unique situation uh, that you go into and that you look at. Um, there won't be a situation where we'll be sitting there on day three if if we kind of stay pat and stand pat and uh, we just say, hey, you know, we got to get a, a pick next this year, so let's go trade, uh, you know, our our, um, our four for a five. It will be based on the value of the board and the the value of the positions and the players that are available to us. If that makes sense. Sorry, you had to made, made I will have to take lots of walks though. Lots of walks. Made some significant changes in the personnel department because you had to. This is your obviously post Andy, the, the first draft, Andy Weidel. Does your process change at all when you, you bring in new people? Do you try to keep everything? Process doesn't change. You know, the, the process um, 
you know, it hasn't been perfect, but it, we continue to try to make the process better. I think when you bring in new people and you talk about the process, you ask what they can add to it from places they've been that they thought was good and that would add to it. Um, so it, it's been really fun for me. You know, I always like being around. You know, I love having the people who've been here for a long time. I love have co- having continuity, but I also get get excited about having new people around with new ideas and new ways of looking at things. You know, it challenges me. It makes me better. Um, so it's been that way here throughout the process. People here who are in, who are in new roles, people who we brought in, um, and th- these these guys are, are really really talented people um, who are are really adding um, to us and to our draft process, to our free agent process. Um, and so I'm, I'm excited for the opportunity for them. Um, and I think it goes both ways. You know, some of the things that we're doing may be different than the things that they've been used to. And, you know, hopefully one day they'll take that with them when they, they get, um, their, their jobs and their opportunities, because I do think they're really talented people. I saw make the addition of, you promoted Kevin Patullo to associate, uh, associate head coach. First off, what warranted the promotion? What's the difference between assistant head coach and associate head coach? And how has his role changed in terms of Brian Johnson being the office coordinator? Uh, yeah, Kevin's role will stay very similar. I just wanted to recognize Kevin for all the things that he does to help me, um, you know, with day-to-day operations as, as uh, you know, as a head coach. Uh, he's done a lot. You know, obviously Jamal does a lot, and and I don't want to. I didn't want to call him both assistant head coaches, right? So associate head coach name was out there. I was able to use that. But, um, and so, you know, some teams have, have both of those. And so Kevin's role changes none on the offensive side of the football. Um, he's still going to do what he has been doing for the past two years. I uh, just wanted to recognize him for, you know, for the job that he's done to help me with everything. And so I, I couldn't do my job without Kevin, um, I, you know, and so I really value him and, and wanted to make sure that I recognized him um, and we recognized him for um, the job that he's done uh, these past two seasons and moving forward. Obviously, the Jalen Hurts kind of – just make us part, Sean. <laughs> I'm okay, Bob. Uh, obviously, the. Uh... Oh, 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 Jalen's on a rookie contract. I'm just going to be reckless and do whatever we want with him. Um, and so, like, we were very careful. I know, and, you know, he got injured. He's gotten injured. Uh, and But we didn't pay him more to do less. I'll say that, right? Um, will we still think about how to protect him? Yeah, because that's our job to protect our quarterback. Um, but, you know, Jalen does a lot of things really well, and we want to utilize the skills that he has – um, so he can continue to play at a high level. And so, um, you know, I, to me, we'll, we'll continue to go about our business the same way we went about our, you know, we went about our business. We'll, we'll always think about protecting him first. Um, but, you know, we didn't pay him more to do less. Along those lines, it, it's obviously though a massive uh, – no, this is my turn. Uh, it's obviously a, uh, a massive uh, investment for organization. How did both of you view your roles in protecting that investment and then maximizing it? Yeah. You and Jalen or me and you? Not me and you. You want to oh. go first? No, he asked you. No, he said, he said how do you and him, uh, you and I. Per- so, both of us. No, you Um Yeah, we just got to continue to do a good job of developing it as how he um, – I'll just answer it for both of us. He's going to want – how he's going to say, <laughs> we're going to bring in guys to help Jalen do his job better. And I'm going to say the guys that Howie uh, you know, brings in, I'm going to do my best and our, our coaching staff is going to do our best to maximize their potential as far as how we develop them fundamentally and as a football player um, and putting them in the positions to be able to make plays. Go ahead. No, no, I want to oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, a good pass. and then my job is to, you know, and where, where was I on that? Um, <laughs> you know, that's, that's our job is to do that. Um, and like I said to Bo, like, we're going to continue to do things. We'll have new wrinkles next year, obviously. We're going to figure out ways to do the things that we've done better, um, the way how we can coach them better, how we can get our guys in position to make the plays better. Um, and, we'll, and we'll grow on the scheme that we've had and to maximize uh, Jalen's um, ability. But make no mistake about it, that's our job, right, to do those things. 
Jalen, the reason Jalen's in this position where he's signed this, you know, big contract is the fact that I've said this a million times. Nobody knows what Jalen Hurts' ceiling is. Why? Because he loves football, right? He's tough. He has high football. He has high football IQ, right? And so the guys that have those things, and he's competitive, right? The guys that have those things tend to reach their ceiling. So he's just going to continue to rise, and and so he's going. He's a big part of this too, because he's, uh, you know, no man suddenly becomes different than his cherished thoughts and habits. He's going to continue to do the things he's done, uh, you know, to this date because that's who he is, right? And so uh, we all have obviously have a part of it. Did you you get on me, Dave? Did he answer your part well enough? I just yeah. said you're gonna bring in guys. Okay. How, how are you been a part of uh, is that? several franchises? He's already he's went to ask two questions. Go. Um, you have two. Zach's ass is done. Pre-draft press conference run by Nick Sirianni. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it was a unique situation. Every year is different. And so I don't I don't think to myself, well, the last year, the success that we had last year, you know, um, says that you can't get the contributions from rookies, right? It just was a unique situation where, you know, our, our number two, or really our first, second, and third picks were behind veterans, right? Um, you know, with – with Cam being behind Jason and 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 uh, Nicobe being behind Kaiser and, and TJ, um, and Jordan, you know, rotating reps. So I just think that was a unique year. What I think is cool about that is that you know how you how you said this, like they're the, now they're we're getting a, almost two draft classes this year, right? With those guys that haven't played, didn't play, they played on special teams and contributed, but now they're coming in and, and ready to step in and, and make plays. I'm excited about that that you're almost combining two years worth of guys, you know, that we're going to count on this year. The other thing is, like, I think it, it was unique, and we don't take it for granted, the health of our team last year. That was a unique situation. And so uh, I think for us to expect the same result as last year um, would be naive at a minimum. And so we got to prepare to understand, to understand that um, for the amount of games that we want to play, it is a long season. And we need depth. We need guys who can play at a high level, a lot of positions. And when we drafted those guys last year, we certainly didn't feel like those three guys wouldn't have an opportunity to get on the field just because the history of all those positions is we've needed guys. And so um, I think when we look at last year, uh, um, instead of thinking about it as a trend, we got to look at it like we got to ensure that we have enough players that are able to play at a high level to get us where we want to, playing the kind of football we want to play in December, January, and hopefully February. You've been a part of several franchise uh, quarterback deals uh, since you've been with the Eagles. How have they informed you in terms of – looking at Jalen's mental makeup and mm-hmm. and how he will be able to handle a significant amount of pay, being the face of the franchise and um, doing all the necessary things that need to be done when, when you were in that role. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to get in the comparison game because I don't think that's fair. What I would say um, in terms of Jalen, the one thing you know about with Jalen is that the money is not going to change him, the money is not going to affect him. You know, my first conversation with him after he signed that conversa- that, that contract – um, he was just telling me how determined he was, and uh, I know how hard he's working in the off season. Um, I know how much football matters to him. Uh, I know how much improving at football matters to him. I know how much he wants to be coached. I know, um, you know, uh, how important it is uh, to try to deliver a championship to the city. Um, you know, obviously, all of us disappointed. We fell short this year. And so uh, I, I don't have any doubt in my mind that uh, giving Jalen this contract will not change the person that Jalen is. Um, you, no you doubt. Talked in the past about how, can I just follow up on that? You talked in the past about how part of your evaluation, part of your player evaluation is how a kid will handle uh, a lot of money in his pocket. Yeah, for sure. Um, it, you know, how does that uh, how does it inform something like this? I mean, is that is that even a conversation, or with him, do you just kind of? Yeah, it's the conversation. It goes like this: It's not going to affect Jalen, but we do discuss it. Yeah, yeah. We do discuss it, but it's like we have no doubt. I mean, we've been and we've been with the guy for what right. three years, and you, you go by daily habits and everything like that. It's just you know the guy, right? 
No, of course, he'll probably call. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come in, I'll come in a Ferrari tomorrow. I'm on day, I'll drive it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, hey, you're right, it's good. Jalen, if you're listening to this, rent it, rent it. Um, you know, I would say this, um, nobody has any idea what we're going to do. Um, I know that. Um, and so for me to think that there's actually people in this league, um, talking to people and saying, Hey, I'm going to draft this guy at 10, but don't tell anyone, you know, like this, this is a, a huge game of poker, right? And all you want to affect is the outcome of your desired results. So, um, you know, am I going to give you guys any answers today? No, not even a little bit. Um, but I think the reality of it is anyone who's sitting there and saying, Hey, I know exactly what's going to happen at pick 11 or pick 12 or pick six or 20. It's all a guess. And I promise you when we come here next Thursday night, um, late and, uh, Nick walks in and says, you know, something like fire up or yells at all you guys. Like, you know, he yells at me sometimes um, in a positive way. Um, you guys will have probably five or six times when a pick, when when uh, the commissioner announces a pick, go, whoa. Because at the end of the day, everyone sees things differently. Just like everyone sees uh, people differently, like everyone sees food differently. The things that we're seeing that we think are so clear and so transparent to another team are totally opposite. And that's what makes the draft kind of fun. You know, like you see things and you go there and you go, there's no way that everyone's not going to see the first 10 picks exactly how we see them. And there will be a difference of opinion. And uh, that's what that's what's really interesting and unique about the draft process. How much time do you then spend, if it's the poker game, of seeding out things that you know to not be true? How much do I? That was a lot of double negatives. But how many? Translate that question. Are you spreading this information? Did he go to UConn? Did he go to UConn? No, my sister's a coach in hockey. Oh, okay. okay. Um, say hockey underneath it. Oh, yeah. I don't um, know if you're repping the basketball team. I, I, I will be honest with you. I never talk about our team. I never talk about our team. So, um, you know, for me, I'm very consistent about that. Like, I, I won't talk to other teams about our team. I won't talk to anyone about our team. When I go to my kids' sporting events, we, how are we going to draft? You know, like, maybe I should start saying stuff there. But um, I don't. Um and I, I think at the end of the day, I, I, I say the same thing. You know, there, there's a very small group of people who um, kind of can figure out what directions that we're, we're thinking about, now depending on where it's going. And um, I say, you know, I say the same things I say to my kids. We got two ears and one mouth. Let's be good listeners the next couple of weeks. A couple more folks or big picture? How? Yeah. Howie, you what's, your, um, what's your big picture? Let's finish. Let's, let's take numbers like Red the Deli Counter. One, two, three, four, five. Can I go first? Uh, <laughs> it's the first question. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. um, so along those lines, sort of what, what you're just talking about, how do you view the overall depth of this draft, maybe relative to previous drafts? And also, uh, how many first round, how many players have first round grades, would you say? Well, since we have two first-round picks, I'm not going to tell you how many guys have first-round grades. Um, I, I'd say this. I never get caught up, and maybe I should. Maybe I'll look at this after the draft. I never get caught up in trying to compare the quality of this draft versus a previous draft because I think we got to be in the moment we're in right now. And to sit there and go, man, you know, this draft doesn't have this or this draft, I wish it had that, it doesn't help us make good decisions for next weekend. And so I'm really focused on uh, what are the opportunities that we have over the next weekend to improve our team, to get players that we think fit and that we think can can be a, a part of, of the culture and the team that we're trying to build over a period of time. So um, I'm not saying there's a cop-out, but I'm being honest. Like, I think if you go back and you say, hey, this is worse than this and this, it just gives you excuses there when at the end of the day we know – there are going to be uh, tremendous players who come out of this draft, and we got to find those guys. Um, we got to bring them to Philadelphia, and that's our challenge, and that's our job, and uh, that's what um, we're going to try to do the best we can to to do over the next uh, week. Mm -hmm. Also, to follow up on something you said on Kelsey's podcast, uh, oh. where you said with, uh, 
of with the presence of, of Stoughton, do you focus more on traits than technique with the offensive line? Because you think you can coach them up on paraphrasing here. Definitely paraphrasing. I definitely didn't say it that way. Definitely. <laughs> um, well, so then I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. let you clarify. Uh, is that A, unique to offensive line, and B, what critical factors do you look for then? Yeah. Um, I think the the thing that we tried to do is we tried to find uh, guys who have unique traits um, that can make a difference in the game. And and I think when you look at, at the best players on our team, um, they all have a unique skill set. They all have tools in their body that allow them to compete at the highest level and to play at Pro Bowl, All Pro level to change games. And so uh, I think what you try to balance in this is um, you, you obviously you want to evaluate the tape and you want the tape to be really good, but you want guys who have tools in their body to develop into elite players. And so when those things don't match, you know, you got to go back a little bit and figure out the reason why. And so when I say that about offensive linemen, when you look at our offensive line and you go left to right and you go, you know, Jordan and you go Landon and you go Kels and you go Cam and you go Lane and obviously we got other offensive linemen. Those are guys we've drafted higher who've made the Pro Bowl. Um, all those guys have unique physical traits, like really unique physical traits. And, um, uh, they also combine that with incredible character, uh, love of the game, passion for the game, and coachability. But that's what I meant when I said that. Like I know that at the end of the day, some of these offensive linemen are so much better than some of these college players that they don't have to be technically sound. And we have a phenomenal coaches on the staff. Certainly Stout is one of them. And when you give our coaches guys with high football character – um, with unique physical traits, they will be developed. And uh, this is one of the things that I tell every player who's been in this building. If you expect a 21, 22 in this draft, 23, 24, 25, which is unique to this draft, um, year olds to come in and day one be finished products, you're going to set yourself up for disappointment. You know, we have to rally around these players. We have an unbelievable um, player development program. We have unbelievable coaches. We have unbelievable staff in this building. We have to rally around each and every player. We will have a plan for each and every player to get them to be better. If we just go, hey, you're in Philadelphia, now it's on you. You know, we're going to be disappointed. And so that we, ha we have to take responsibility in making these players better. What does that New receiver kind of follow uh, up affect uh, Quez question. Watkins? We got first question. To, to kind of follow oh. up on that, um, considering how close you were this past season, and aside from Jalen, how some of your core on both sides of the ball, the window could be getting a little bit smaller, how tempting does that make that next week to take a player who may be more ready to help you right now rather than somebody who has a higher ceiling? Yeah, I'd look at it a little differently, and, and maybe this is, this is wrong, but I'd look at, at our roster right now, and I'd say, you know, there there isn't a spot that we have to have next week. And um, that doesn't mean that we can't get better, because we can definitely get better, and, and our goal is to continue to improve our football team, and that's not going to end next weekend. You know, that's not going to end, you know, I say this all the time, till the trade deadline, and until, um, you know, even after that, you have you have some cuts. So uh, roster building is a year-round uh, job for us, and so this is this is a big part of it. Um, but I look at it like um, you know we got to ensure that we're getting the right players and that we're not forcing anything. And the mistakes are made when you force and you try to make something out of, out of nothing. And um, you know we have we have barometers in place. I think with the conversations that we have, where we really um, try to test each other and try to play devil's advocate and make sure that we're not doing something just because we want to make something into something that. Maybe he's not there. How would, how would, how would wide receiver Jeff, acquisition ha uh, affect uh, Quez Watkins? How does it affect him? He's a um, slot. Yeah, we just added depth to the to the group. Um, you know, Quez. I got a lot of confidence in Quez, and I know he's gonna he's gonna come back. He, I know he's come, he's he's hungry. He's he's determined. Um, you know, he feels like. You know, he didn't have his best season. Now, he didn't get the opportunities. We've talked about this. He didn't get the opportunities that he, he had in the, in the past. Um, and so it's just taking advantage of the opportunities that he has. But, um, you know, Quez is our, our number three receiver. There'll be there'll be competition for just like there was when, when Zach was here for different roles within that. Um, but he, uh, you know, we're excited about Quez. I'm, ex I'm really excited um, with our – 
you know, with our new addition. Pronounce his name. I can't. Or, yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, and but as I, I talk to him I, more. Could I, can, they, yeah. can, I, can I add something that you've yeah. said to me? And I'm just going to yeah. say your words because I think they're important. I mean, you, you watch, you, you spend a man, tremendous amount of time um, trying to improve the offense, which I appreciate, and looking at tape. And you've come into me multiple times and talked about – uh, there, nobody's down on Quez Watkins in this building. I mean, we're excited about him and the skill set that he has. And um, I'm not saying this, you know, to be combative in any way, Jeff, but at the end of the day, like, he's also played outside. Like, this, this a lot of the guys that we have, are, and you've talked about this with with our staff when we're talking about it, like, guys can multi-align, you know, so uh, guys can play inside and out. And um, I think that's, that's one of the benefits of uh, the group that we have. We got to knock a couple more. How would you say your approach to the draft, your preparation of the draft has changed over the years? You've been GM, and uh, is there any one kind of thing you've learned along the way uh, that informs the way you do this? Yeah, I definitely think that uh, along the way that uh, my process um, has changed. Um, ho- hopefully, I-, I think for the better, but certainly the results will determine that. Uh, and I think really th- the big part of it is is including every part uh, of the information. And I think that my my biggest mistakes have been when I, I, you know you're kind of stubborn about something that you you see and not looking at. Um, you know, you got to look at, you know, why will this fail? Why won't this work? As opposed to all, all the, you know, we want to be glass half full uh, evaluators here, but you got to also look at like what what is right in front of you that says this may not work out. And um, how do you do that? Well, uh, you obviously, you got the subjective stuff, which is, you know, watching the tape and, and grading the player. You have the objective stuff, which is the testing. Um, you have the psychological stuff, which is a big part. And um, we got a great group here, you know, a tremendous group of, of people who, who help with that. Um, and then you, you got really the team building, the resource allocation part of it. And so I think um, one of the things I'm very fortunate is I get to hear all that information. And I, and obviously the coaches are part uh, of the subjective stuff, so I'm not, not including them on that, and how they're used. So when you, you put those factors together, you know, um, it really it, it helps you make better decisions. Again, we're talking about 21, 22. There are going to be mistakes. We know, we know the rates on that. But we're just we're just trying to make as good a decisions as we possibly can, and sometimes, um, sometimes it, it pays to take chances. You know, whether it's incredible tools in the bo- in their body to to become elite players, um, but sometimes it's also okay. You know, I, I've I've had this new you know out of respect for the Phillies, you know, go Phillies, um, is is like you can score a lot of runs when you hit a lot of doubles. You know, and um, I think it's all playing baseball, so I must be in a little baseball moment right there. But um, you, so I think that's OK. You know, like you don't always have to swing for the fences. Um, and I think if you keep hitting doubles, you keep rounding the bases, you keep scoring runs, you keep building a really good football team. Hey, Howie, um, when it comes guys. to the end of the draft, of when you're in the back end of the first round, that fifth year option, how does it affect it from a value standpoint versus those, you know, top few picks in the second round? Well, I, th- I think the fifth-year option, obviously, it buys you a year. And um, I think when you're talking about uh, really good players and you're talking about trying to keep your team together, um, it gives you an opportunity to, to have an extra year of contract value. Um, I think that's incredibly important uh, as you look at it, and it, it's valued. And I think those are decisions that you make um, about whether you want to come back into the first round and, and get a fifth year on a guy or you know what the value you're getting to come out of the first round. Yeah, I think you're a product of your experience, and, and I think um, certainly I've had experience with with an older player, older players, and you you have to kind of um, balance the fact that you know when you're 23, 24, you're more physically developed than you are when you're 18 or 19, and so when you're playing guys that are four or five years older at that time in their life. I mean, you're talking about, you know, probably 20% increase in strength and power. And so you're not, you're not necessarily judging the same level of competition. And so um, you got to take that into account when, when you're drafting guys and, um, and understand, you know, what is the ceiling of these guys? And, you know, our, our performance staff does a tremendous job of, of, of talking about um, where guys can get and where we think we can take guys. But it's definitely a factor.